Very nice. So this is what we uh, obviously spent all winter doing some of these windows. So these windows now, the frames have been cleaned. And they've had three coats on the frames. The windows, the sashes, they had three coats before they come out here. And then uh, <coughs> I don't want any of these as openers. So I corked them together, put another coat over the top, and then they'll be ready for a fifth and final coat just to cut everything in and make it tidy. But there's nothing more I can do with these now. But I mean, how has that changed the building? We can go from this. All right, so these were all broken before. So we got the windows in in this area here yesterday. None of them are corked or painted, but they're in all these uh, sashes here, of course. They're all inside. We did them over the winter and the ones on the end. But windows first. The biggest down, well, there was two big downsides to this building. The first was the chimney. <laughs> yeah, yeah, steady. And that was letting in Oodle's amount of, of ice and water. And then um, I put a canvas on that two years ago. And then the windows, of course, were all broken. So these frames can now be unboarded and cleaned up. I can't do this today. My back's not quite up to it. And we got these sashes in yesterday. And it kind of all looked like that before. Uh, but the glass was all smashed out of it. Kids over the years with stones. And then the worst face, and the reason this is the worst face, is you can see because of the sun. And these are now all done as well, so we can get these in. I do these once the scaffolding's up. And then these ones up here. But this is, without doubt, the worst elevation. And I may even reboard it, but we'll see. And for some reason, so these are all the windows behind and these are the windows that you'd expect to be smashed and they're not. They smashed the ones at the front of the building. And it's obviously been done over a, a lot of years, I can tell. Anyhow, we're getting there. Right. Another job I'd like to get done this year is this decking. Yeah. I'd like to get a new deck down here. So these, of course, you've seen many times. Um, there's two left. I'll show you where those go. And the rest go out on the, the front face of the building here and round the back. Oh, there's some small windows above this door, stage door here, like that. And I don't think there's enough light to be able to take you on a tour of the building, but um, I've got this one at the start, so unlike the others. So this is going to be uh, the tea rooms. Um, it's very dark in here, we'll see. Oh uh, no, it's too dark in there. So this will be the tea rooms. Um, this used to be like, uh, I think this was just a general meeting room. And uh, in here was the old box office for the theatre. You'd, you'd come in here, this was the cloak room, hard to kind of see really, and there was the box office and this is a theatre itself in here, but uh, it's very dark. So there's a lot of work to do, the biggest job is the floor, uh, during World War II this was an ammunition store and um, didn't do the building any good, but anyway, and that's why it's all secured and shuttered up like it is. Uh, the army done this in World War Two, and it hasn't really been used since World War Two. It's quite amazing, really. Um, some of this junk is, I say junk. Some of this stuff is uh, mine. This is an old weaving loom. Um, there's a lot of boat building pieces that I want to rescue. Um, but anyway, so there we are, that's those three windows in and painted and put together. I mean, it's just, it's just cool, you just can't, you just can't find this anymore. 
and um, yeah, I will have it restored. But there's a lot to do. And it's a start, we get the windows done. So that's us for the day here. We'll go off and um, get on with another job somewhere else. Ah, see, now here's all the glass out the window, see? Every single pane was smashed. Except those three, and except those four. You can see I didn't take them out. So these, that's the original, and then this is the restored one. Both of those needed doing. The one over the door was smashed. And then uh, over there. But I also took the liberty of doing the inside one there because that was also smashed. So left those windows there and done with new glass. Um, yeah, where I was going was. <coughs> so the wind's getting up. I'm going to shut us in. So. This is kind of like uh, the private entrance. There's the original World War II military sign. Um, there are the stairs, upstairs. There's a nice apartment when I get there. And then uh, this, will be a, this will be a kitchen. There's no point in opening this because it's boarded up outside. But you can shut this building up and make it very secure. But anyway, this will be the kitchen. And then this will be the tea rooms. Sarah's going to do tea rooms here. And the theatre is going to be restored. And we're going to use the theatre for a theatre, for a cinema, and for a loppis. And behind that wall there, I wonder if we can go on a journey. I've never been there, but I know behind this wall is the original cinema camera. Now, Originally, when they sold me this building, they wanted to take it out. I don't know whether we can see. Right here, right behind that wall, in there, is the original camera. There's only one way in, and I've never managed to get in it. But that is something we could do. Let's go and see if we can get in this. All right, so here's the back of the building. <coughs> and you can see this door. Right, behind this door, and I've never managed to get in it for several reasons. <coughs> behind this door, if we can get in, oh, I am told. Ooh. Oh my god, there it is. Shit, we have to get up in here. You can just see a fucking accident happening real fast here. Right. Wow. Wow. Interesting. It's asbestos clad. Okay. I don't think anybody's been in there in a very, 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 very long time. How cool is this? See if we can get a date off of this. Huh. 52. 23rd, 8.52. There you go. So this must have been converted from the theatre to the cinema then. After the war. And look at all the clippings. Right, we may. And this is... Uh, this is just amazing. <laughs> right, so that's a heat pipe. Okay, so that takes the heat pipe out of here. There's the instructions, look. 1963, we have a date there. 16, 21st, 12, 63, so that's Christmas 1963. I wouldn't normally interrupt my own films, but just so that you get a feel for what else is going on in the rest of this film, um, I can confirm the last time that projector and cinema and room was occupied was indeed 
the 21st of December 1963 and it was showing a Peter Sellers film. Amazing. And there it is. And this in my mind, in my mind, I can restore this and make it run again. With the films, Onto the cinema screen. And that is what I want to do. And the condition in here is just amazing. I mean, what is this? Do I even want to? I have to. And a little heater. All right, well, we need to know what that is. And there, I don't know if you can see, but maybe this is be cleaner. No, but I can see into the theatre from there. And this, look at an, oh, look how amazing, unbelievable condition this is in. This has been sat here for 60 years or more, right? And look how it was left. There's the little cleaning brush, just walked out the door. Look at the condition of it. Oh, and it's still got oil in it. <laughs> wow. Oh, it's near perfect condition. Oh, I'm so glad that they didn't try and rip this out. And the, the idea, right, wasn't a bad idea, but their idea was to put it in the local museum, and I don't want it in a museum. I want to run it. <clears throat> Stockholm, Sweden, I think that's... Uh, do you know, it's got a lovely thin coating of oil all over it. Talk about save the day. Is there any film in here though? We need some films. That's what we need. And this is the control box for the volume. Wow. Wow, it's just amazing condition. Fantastic. Okay. What do we have over here? Sounds like and looks like carbon. Oh yes. Woohoo! Jackpot. Amazing, 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 amazing. Unbelievable. We can make this work. We can definitely make this work. There is no doubt about oh, I, I don't even quite know what I'm doing here. But Oh, what this is. Oh, there we go. What sort of shit is that? Hmm, that's mouse or I'd say mouse shit. There's been some mooses living in there. Well, there's the old carbon rods. Where's that coming from then? There's the old carbon rods that. Now, if I was a betting man, and I am, I would say, and this is a guess, because I mean, you know, I know a little bit about Nikola Tesla. I would say that, um, firstly, there's still something living in this fucking tube up here. Oh, I just swore, bollocks. Oh, I've done it again. Um, I would say those carbon rods created an arc, and that's what created the light on the mirror, if I was a betting man. Uh, 
how cool is that? That's just the coolest in the world. Yeah. Yeah, look at the heat on there. And that's why this room is asbestos lined. Because of the arc that would be created in there. What have we got down here? Big heavy curtain, that's for sure. Whatever is hiding underneath it. Cans of something or other. What's this then? What is this thing? That's another big type of generator of some sort, I'd have said. I can't actually see that, can I? I don't know, but <clears throat> and bearing in mind, oh, I say bearing in mind, right? You don't know, but the old three-phase electricity here, yeah. <clears throat> not the best in the world, so everything would have had to have been a slow start up and um, split between many phases, which is what this is. Unfortunately, there's no power to the building, which is a good thing. Wow, okay, so there's this big thing here, I, I can't imagine what this was for, the one thing I can't find, I don't know what this would have been for, there's the old carbon rods look, there's the carbon rods burnt out and chucked in the metal bin down there, but I don't know what this is, this big box here. It doesn't look like it's the sort of thing there where there'd be films. What do we have in here? <laughs> no! For years I've been watching everybody else's channel and they've been doing all these great discoveries. Today, today it's my own. Oh, yes, 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 yes. God, you have to be my age to even know what these are, or older. But what I can tell you is if you used to drop these, they would shatter. Okay, and I know what these would have been used for. So these are for, um, they would have been played here between films, before films, after films, maybe even, <laughs> Maybe even um, for some of the silent films. And like I say, you have to be... There's a little electric heater down there. You have to be my age or older to even understand. I don't know what this is. How we get into it. There's a lot of... Let me just... Let me put this somewhere. I don't know whether that's going to work or not. kind of don't everything's so well preserved in here I'm gonna do that and I kind of don't want to because quite clearly nothing has come to harm in all the years the lenses down there in all the years this has been here right it has survived in just the most amazing condition ever so I don't think we have any film but what I am gonna do is oh, there we go right I'm going to take this bit of film here. Oh, it's got something on it. And then I know what kind of film it is. But this, oh, there we go, look at that. What is this? That's film. I'm just taking a little snippet. This is a, this was obviously the cutting area here where films were cut and Put it together, there doesn't appear to be any films, but anyhow, there we go. So, last date I found in here was 63. Doesn't seem to be anything past 63. So, I don't actually know when it was last used as a cinema. 
but we'll just shut all this back up. It's really, really, really fascinating. It's got to be, so this is the whole arc box in here. So electricity generates the arc there. That lights up the lens. That sends the direction of light out of here, out of there. Right, you can see where the film would run across. You would load the film up, there's the lens in there. You would load the film up to run across there. And then you would shut that up like that. That's a tensioner, yeah, that's the film tensioner. And, and the dog's on here, the, the little teeth. That fits in there, like that. Right, so if you ever wondered what those holes were on the side of old film, and you've never been privy to a cinema projector before, that's how it would run. And that would run down there through that lens. And then, <clears throat> let's see if we can get the camera around there. Out of there, and out of there. <clears throat> so, let's just put that bit of film there. This is screwed into here, not quite sure why, but anyway, that would look like. And of course that would be where your film is shot out of. And down the other end of the film, oh, there's a large screen. I'm not quite sure why that one's up. I'm guessing, ah, oh, that's an inspection one. Right, so that is so that the operator, okay, we've got two here. That's the one for the camera. This is the one for the operator. And then we've got a list of, uh, a bank of switches here. All right. And these would have been for lights or screen, no lights. This would be to put the lights on and off. Okay, one more thing I wanted to look at. All right, something that's intriguing me. What is this? But now I've shown where it is and what it is. Oh, God. Now I've shown where it is and what it is, it has to come with me. That's an Arga Baltic. It's just a, can't even get a particularly good shot of Showing this. Okay, well. I am so pleased that this wasn't taken. Because now I can restore it and play cinema operator, which might not mean anything to you. There's a thing called Saturday morning pictures. So you used to go to the cinema. I think it was, uh, it used to be threepence or... Anyhow, and for me, the, the, the two best experiences of Saturday morning cinema was the, the, the cinema operating room, which you got closer to than you did when you went to normal cinema, and messing around with my mates. And as you can see, no mates, they read the dead, too fat, can't fit through the door, or a long, long, long way away from me. Um, but... They didn't make it, but I did make it, finally, <laughs> after 45 years, into the cinema operator's room, uh, which I own. This is my machine. I'm going to make this run. I am. We are going to see films running at the theatre in the future. Might take me a few years, you know, back, money. Whew. There's a lot of obstacles, but we have the basics. We have the cinema. All right, and we have the machine, and I'm pretty sure I can restore it and get my hands on some of these. And we could, of course, uprate it um, to a new bulb, and all, but you've got to get the carbon rod. You've got, you've got to try it, you? you've got to try it. So I don't know what's involved in uprating the electrics or just checking they work. I don't suppose they need uprating. We just, we need, we just need to get it working, but anyway, so. This, my beauty, you are coming with me. Oh, 
I've got hooked up there. So then, that must have been an air vent, and that must exhaust out here somewhere. Yeah, well, there must have been a better exhaust on there because you'd be setting the building on a look. Since all the buildings are rotten, but yeah, asbestos. Hmm. And from everybody's going, oh my god, it's asbestos! Yeah, and and what? Oh, don't say it's on. You said a bad word again, there. Interesting. It's all interesting. Scissors. Yeah, it really. Really, um. <laughs> awesome. Oh, it's still got oil in it. Just incredible. Amazing. I'm so pleased that nobody's got into here. I don't know when the last time a human being came in here was, but um, I'm sure glad that I managed to get older. This, you know, the, the, the options were in the village. There was people that wanted it pulled down, and um, and I didn't want to pull it down. I wanted to restore it, and uh, it went to committee like these things do, and um, I managed to acquire the building, and thankfully everything that was in here because whilst that looked very nice whilst that would look very nice in a museum it'd look much better playing an old film out of that hole and uh it's just a shame that i can't i can't show you what i can see but i can't maybe if i turn the light off then we have as much trouble turning the light off as we do turning the damn thing on if i put my finger over it I also, well that's not going to work because it's on. Okay, anyway, now I know. So for the last two years this has kind of been bothering me and you can't get in here in the winter and, I, and the door was locked and I didn't, um, what's that? That's something so you can see inside. Anyhow, that's all good. Well, I'm pretty sure there's no films in here but I am taking the strip of film with me. Oh, maybe I have blurred the camera lens with my big fat finger. Oh, my eye saw it's cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it's just not focus. Uh, it just won't focus. Uh. Right, bit of film. Ah, there's the extra bit of exhaust for the old film bits. Fascinating. And some more old film. It's definitely got stuff on it. Be able to see that when we get outside. So I don't see anything past 63. I can't remember where I saw that night. There, 1963. And I don't see anything later than that. Not that there's an awful lot in here to see anything later with them than that with. But carbon rods, electricity. I think I've smeared the lens. Right, we're out of it. And you've got to pack up here and get on to something else. 
Yeah, I've smeared the lens. Well, I couldn't just leave that video there. So, um, having done some investigation into what it was I found, uh, uh, it's a uh, Arga Baltic standard, 35 millimeter, 24 frames per second. It's potentially manufactured 1948 to 1950, and it was probably installed into that cinema new, again, somewhere between 1946 and 1950. And that would have been after the end of the war and by the time the army had had chance to move their ammo out of the old uh, theatre. And it, it was, it had its day as a theatre by then, I should imagine, and that's when it was transformed into a cinema. Unfortunately, it clearly didn't run for too many years. Um, if it's last showing, and we know it's last showing, the last day that anybody was in that room was the 21st of December, um... Uh, 1963, albeit somebody opened the door uh, some uh, time later and threw in all those coat hangers, but it's been locked and sealed ever since then, so 1963. So it was in there for about 13 years, um, and that kind of ties up with the people that I've spoken to locally. Um, it was produced by... Um, Arga Baltic, which was a combination of two companies that were put together. Um, the original uh, uh, company was formed, I think, in 1936. Anyway, things didn't really get going for them until after the war. Um, and uh, that was one of their first of their basic standard projectors uh, installed into there. Their advertising blurb of the day... <coughs> played on the fact uh, of materials, um, materials of highest quality, uh, bore falls, guarantees for gears and uh, greatest uh, durability. So bore falls is probably best known for their anti-aircraft cannons. Um, they were established in 1873 in the south of Sweden near Stockholm and they made military weapons. Um, uh, Borfors really developed the anti-aircraft gun 1938 and it was used by the Swedish and the British and possibly copied by the Americans and then it went on, Borfors went on to become uh, not only a, a, a military, a Swedish military supplier but also became uh, a British military supplier. Borfors uh, teamed up with an, another company whose name escapes me and they went on to produce uh, military weapons um, for the British or, or, or within Britain. Anyhow, so um, after the war, of course, uh, Boer Force weren't producing the weapons like they were, so they produced parts for cinema cameras and, and many other things. And um, the Ultra 2s, which although it's tagged Ultra 2, it isn't an Ultra 2, they also had a water cooling jacket, which couldn't have been used in the situation in the room that we found it in because that building had no water and still to this day has no water. Um, so there were extra cooling jackets and there was supposed to be a fan. And whilst I didn't see it while we was in that room, there's supposed to be a fan that extracts the hot air up the tube and then out and away from the arc. So this kind of all ties in um, with it being after the war and to meet the expected great demand for colour film projectors. Uh, America had promised only colour film after the war. Arga Baltic had designed a cinema projector which was uh, primarily aimed at colour film. Um, I'm not sure about sound. I don't think that camera has any way of interpreting sound. Um, and uh, I didn't ask, I must admit, when I was speaking to the gentleman who went there, saw the very last film, Peter Sellers, um, whether they had sound, and I couldn't find in that room, I didn't see anything in the room, and I wasn't really thinking about what I was looking for, any way of projecting sound. Um, and the best I know, there aren't any speakers in the theatre either, so I'll have to look into that a little bit more. So I add in here uh, images that I found of the production of these cameras during 1946, 47 and 48 um, and some other images of the camera that I've managed to find.
So the reason for the carbon rods and the arc is at that point there were no light bulbs that could be made small enough or powerful enough to project the light strong enough to meet the requirements of the cinema projector. So effectively the arcing of the mirror that was quite old technology for the time that they was, these were being produced, but you couldn't produce that higher intensity of light in any other way other than with an arc between carbon rods. Uh, there may well be a way of quite easily updating that if you can find the right kind of bulb to project through that tunnel, uh, as it were. Um, but anyway, I'm thinking it should try to be restored in its original condition, if at all possible. So my, my uh, year's date installation purchase of cameras are estimates based on the type of machine, when it was made, and when they went on to change them to the Ultra 1 and Ultra 2s, albeit within a standard format. So I'm kind of guessing there. It's um, unclear. There's no real records um, and very little information within the camera room itself. I have searched the building for other information and I did find a newspaper clipping from 1917, I think, with regards to um, a theatre performance that was there. So we know that's been in operation since around 1900. That particular building could have been before that. Um, but um, there's uh, the transfer of data here is not particularly good and uh, the old people that would have been alive then of course are all dead and not necessarily passed on the information so that's about all I know with regards to the camera and now the other item that was found in the room which was obviously put up against the wall um, in that camera room and was potentially there during the last showings in 1963. I'm going to be doing a video on that next. Um, it's kind of an important document and, as I uh, mentioned earlier, is directly linked to Abraham Lincoln, so it should be an interesting one. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.